final item of business today is a member's business motion number 9412 in the name of Siobhan McMahon on recognising the work of the Scottish Centre for Children with Motor Impairments and Bobath Scotland. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I would invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. And if you are ready, I now call on Siobhan McMahon to open the debate. Seven minutes, please. Thank you, President Officer. I would like to thank everyone who has signed my motion and has stayed behind either to support the debate or indeed take part themselves. I know that many more members would have liked to take part in this debate this evening, but other commitments have prevented them from doing so. One such member is my colleague Patricia Ferguson, who is in Wales attending a conference at the moment and is therefore unable to be here in person tonight. But she sent her very best wishes for the debate and in particular her best wishes to Bobath Scotland. I know Patricia is no stranger to Bobath given she is the constituency member representing them and she herself has led a number of member debates recognising the invaluable contribution both Bobath make to young people and their families across Scotland. Of course, today's debate is not simply about recognising the great work of Bobath Scotland. It is also about recognising the great work that the Scottish Centre for Children with Motor Impairments do, particularly in relation to education and therapy ser services for children and young people throughout Scotland. In November last year, I took part in the Hemi Health Professional Conference at the Royal College of Surgeons in Edinburgh. As some members will know, I am one of the patrons of Hemi Help, a charity that aims to use their specialist knowledge and supportive networks of families and professionals to create awareness and understanding in order to empower children and young people affected by hemiplegia across the UK to reach their full potential. I was asked to speak at that conference about my own experience as someone who is growing up with hemiplegia and what that means to me. As I spoke about my journey, I was not aware that there were representatives of both Bobath Scotland and the Scottish Centre for Children with Motor Impairments in the audience. However, following my speech, they made contact with me to tell me, somewhat worryingly, that some of the things that I had spoke about happening some 20 years ago are still happening, and they requested that I visited each of their centres to find out more, something I was delighted to do. The Scottish Centre for Children with Motor Impairments was established in 1991 and is one of Scotland's grant-aided special schools. It is based in Cumbernauld, an area that is within central Scotland region, the area that I have great pleasure in representing in this parliament. The centre mainly helps children and young people who have cerebral palsy and related conditions. When the centre was opened 23 years ago, the aim was to provide education for children with motor impairments based on the principles of conductive education and other progressive education methods. In doing this, the centre allows children and young people to achieve their potential, which in turn allows them to develop their independence and gain key life skills. All the staff that work at the centre have a background in either health or education, which allows for a holistic approach which involves teachers, physiotherapists and other staff working in close partnership, which leads to greater integration of educational and physical activities, resulting in each child's needs being met in the way they require them to be. Both Bath Scotland is a Scottish charity that I am sure all members are aware of already as a result of the fantastic work the organisation do, not only in Glasgow, where they are based, but throughout Scotland. The Scottish wing of the charity has been devoted to improving the quality of life for children and adults with cerebral palsy since 1996. Bobath also provide a holistic approach to therapy. They really recognise that each person with cerebral palsy is an individual and will therefore have different needs and abilities. The therapy offered by Bobath Scotland is a transdisciplinary approach involving occupational therapy, physiotherapy and speech and language therapy. Bobath Scotland believe that by taking that approach, they can give people with cerebral palsy the skills they require to explore the world, communicate their needs and participate as much as possible in all aspects of their lives. As I mentioned earlier, the conditions that both the Scottish Centre for Motor Impairment and Bobath Scotland deal with are something I know a lot about. Having been born with hemiplegia, I know of the difficulties faced when trying to access some vital services such as occupational therapy or physiotherapy. I started attending the outpatient department at Monklands Hospital in Airdrie when I was three weeks old. My frequent visits there ended in my early 20s when I was transferred to hospitals in Glasgow. Monklands Hospital was a place I would come to know very well. It will always have a special place in my heart. The friendly and dedicated staff that I dealt with throughout my time at the hospital have had a massive contribution to the person I am today. Put simply, it is because of them that I have the ability to walk. Given I was already in the health system from such a young age, it is somewhat surprising that I was not allocated a physiotherapist until I was, I was around seven years of age. My mum carried out some exercises in me that she had been given by the consultant at that time. However, I do not think it is appropriate to give that responsibility to a parent. The reason for that is simple. 
the guilt factor. Despite knowing that if my mum didn't carry out the painful exercises on me, then I wouldn't be able to do most of the things I do today, the guilt she still feels at being the person who carried that out on me is immeasurable. Why this burden should be placed on parents when we have trained and capable medical staff available to us, I really don't know. That is where my ultimate frustration lies. I don't believe it is good enough that in the 21st century we haven't achieved a more joined-up approach to healthcare. It angers me that hospital is treated differently to your GP, which is treated differently to an OT or a physio or your social worker. We need a far more joined-up approach that will not only help the patients, but all the partners that I have mentioned previously. Given that there are already centres like the two I have mentioned today doing this work, I think we should be using their expertise as the model and roll this out to every part of our country. I believe one of the most important principles both the Scottish Centre for Children with Motor Impairments and Bow Bath Scotland achieve is a family-centred approach. Too, after, too often, siblings of children with disabilities don't receive the attention and focus they deserve. I didn't realise until a couple of years ago the impact my disability has had on my younger brother and sister. They weren't asked how they felt when they had to spend another endless night in a &E with me, or when our holidays were shifted around to fit in with yet another operation for me, or indeed how they felt when other children said insulting things to me in the playground. And yet, of course, they were affected. That is why the work that is done at these centres with siblings is so vital and helps to maintain that close family bond, not because of the disability, but in spite of it. I know that the Scottish Centre for Motor Impairments employs a dedicated family support coordinator, which I think is a fantastic idea. To be clear, that support coordinator is for the family, not the parents, not the child with a disability, but all of the family. The coordinator assists families in a variety of ways, which includes providing them with information, helps them secure appropriate services for their children, and makes sure that all the family's views and feelings are listened to when important decisions are being made. As members may know, the core services of the Scottish Centre for Children with Motor Impairments are funded by the Scottish Government. However, some of the vital services, such as funding to allow children under the age of two to attend the centre, or the siblings group, or the operation and maintenance of the hydrotherapy pool, a cost of over £30,000 a year, are exclusively funded through donations. In terms of Bobath Scotland, it costs around £650,000 to keep the centre open each year. I understand that 75 per cent of this comes from voluntary sources, although some NHS boards do make contributions to the cost of therapy. I have had the great pleasure of visiting both centres, and I saw for myself the incredible difference the individuals at these centres can make on a young person's life. I therefore urge the Scottish Government to do all they can to continue to fund both centres and others like them in order that young people benefit from these vital services. Thank you. Thank you. And I now call on James Dornan to be followed by Jackson Carlo. Four minutes or thereby, please. Thanks very much, President Officer. I would like to start by uh, thanking Siobhan McMahon for bringing this debate to the Chamber and also for the a very passionate and moving way that she, she made her contribution there. Uh, it's clear to many of us that Bobath Scotland is a vital service for those who use it. And just to emphasise the important role it plays, I want to tell you a story. It's a story about six-year-old Lachlan Morris, who I've had the pleasure of knowing since he was just a baby. Lachlan lives with his parents, Susan and Paul, and his three-year-old brother, Donald. Lachlan's dad, Paul, was a colleague of mine when I was a counsellor. We worked very closely together, and I'd consider him to be a good friend. I remember well when Lachlan was born, and I remember Paul telling me that Lachlan had a condition. It turned out that Lachlan has quadriplegic choreathiosis cerebral palsy, which means all four limbs are involved. In Lachlan's case, he's unable to speak clearly, sit, eat, walk, or dress himself. There is very little that he can do without support. However, he's also very bright and charming, and boy, can I vouch for that. He attends a mainstream part primary school in Alloa and is supported at school by an excellent team of professionals. He regularly tops his class for spelling and numeracy. He uses a Toby iGaze computer system to communicate and is becoming very adept at asking important questions and, as his father says, being cheeky. Paul shared some photos with me taken from his computer. One was a birthday list which included a ladybird pet seat. Don't ask uh, what that is, but he likes ladybirds because of Gaston from Ben and Holly's Kingdom. Again, don't ask me, but I suspect it's a children's programme. But then, of course, he asked, how much is it? He had other photos from the Scottish Cup final, asking how many fans are going. Lachlan was one of the many Dundee United fans at the final. He had a great day, but was disappointed by the result. I do suspect that's more his Arab mad dad speaking than Lachlan, to be honest. Lachlan loves football and loves going to Tanadice with his daddy and uncles. He also loves swimming and is a very sociable young man. 
He's attended Bobath, Scotland and Glasgow through annual blocks of therapy since he was three years old. There are different ways that these blocks can be taken, tailored to suit the needs of the child. Lachlan has three one-hour sessions over the course of six weeks, once a year. The key to the Bobath Centre in Scotland, this has already been indicated, is that it specifically works with the aim of supporting local therapists, so they work intensively with the children and also invite in the child's local physiotherapist, speech therapist and occupation therapist to discuss, observe and participate in sessions. They develop particular activities and exercise which can be taken back to the community and worked on. They also invite in key workers, such as nursery workers or teachers, to come in for a session and observe and practice things like how to hold or support the child most effectively and how to build exercises into routines. These skills and techniques are then used in Lachlan's care. The regular, th the regular therapy has had a marked impact on Lachlan's physical development, coordination and self-confidence. It's also had a positive effect on his mum and dad who have learned a great deal on how best to handle Lachlan and to work with him to improve his body strength and coordination over time. Simple things like how to sit and hold children like Lachlan, who can't sit up on their own and can't control strong movements, are important skills that Bobath can teach. And now that Lachlan's at school, the Bobath therapy is also including opportunities for support staff to learn more about the way Bobath therapy can help Lachlan in his school context. Of course, this specialised and vital service costs and it wouldn't be where it is without the generosity of the people who donate regularly to the service or fundraise on behalf of the service. This includes Paul and Lachlan's wee brother Donald, who have raised over £9,000 in the last three years, taking part in the annual Bike for Bobath fundraiser, Donald Riding Pillion, of course. Bobath now have plans to extend its reach to help assist adults with motor problems. This is a sensible and worthwhile pursuit, particularly as the youngest patients who worked at Bobath Scotland in the mid-1990s will now be reaching adulthood. I know Paul and Susan consider themselves fortunate that their NHS board area fully funds all Lachlan's treatment, but apparently this is not the case in all health board areas. I hope through Lachlan's story I've made the Chamber aware of just how crucial Bobath Scotland is to users and their families throughout the country. I'm sure that members will do all they can to support it. And I ask the Minister if there's anything he can do to urge NHS health boards to look at funding the Bobath needs for people in their own area. Thank you. Thank you. Now, call on Jackson Carlaw to be followed by Dr. Richard Simpson. <clears throat> Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I congratulate Siobhan McMahon on bringing this motion to the Chamber this afternoon and hope that I can uh, do justice to the subject and the brief contribution I'll make. Many members, of course, are familiar with Bow Bath. We've had debates in the Chamber on it on a number of occasions, and of course, most members will be aware of the facility, even if they're not aware that they are, because driving through Glasgow and the M8, you can see the Bow Bath Centre. Uh, at just uh, near Springburn as you do and Stephanie Fraser and the team there I think have done an absolutely outstanding job in providing uh, a facility, a respite facility in many cases for families not just in Glasgow but as has already been said from across Scotland. For many members of the public of course there was an awareness of the issue if not a personal one uh, with David and Samantha Cameron and their young son Ivan who sadly died and I think what became apparent from that to Families who don't have uh, the experience first-hand or even second-hand uh, of children with cerebral palsy is just the completely overwhelming involvement of both the parents, the family, the friends, the carers, the network, and the tremendous love and dedication that there is from all of those, but also the reward that there is, which I think James Dornan touched on, uh, in the response and the, the sheer uh, ability to give love in return from the children who are affected. I have to say I was less uh, aware of the Scottish Centre for Children with Motor Impairments or, in fact, that Siobhan McMahon had a direct connection with it. Now, in preparation for this afternoon's debate, went onto the website and looked to see that it, too, found a little bit earlier than Bobath Scotland, is providing a similar service to children over a very wide area, albeit with the benefit of a grant aid from the Scottish Government, uh, it also complements itself through uh, voluntary giving. I have to say I'm not a soft touch on these occasions, but as I read through the whole website, I eventually came to a button that said donate now, so I pressed it. 
so as a result of this afternoon's debate, I actually ended up making a donation to the, to the centre. And when I got my word of thanks back, it said, fundraising is a very important part of our income, with all funds raised going directly to helping the children and families we support. Fundraising supports in particular the Early Intervention Service, the Siblings Group, and the Hydrotherapy Pool, which I think Siobhan McMahon made reference to. Donations also allow us to purchase equipment to further assist in the children's development and to maintain our play area sense garden and learning garden. So I actually thought, um, rather than just writing a speech, I'd done something a bit more worthwhile. I suspect Stephanie Fraser will be on the phone tomorrow expecting a parallel donation to Bobath Scotland, and I pledge here in the chamber that that's one I shall also make. But I congratulate Siobhan McMahon on the motion. And I say, you know, these organisations do such fantastic work. You know, a generation or so ago, families were left to fend for themselves. We've moved beyond that, and it is incumbent upon us all to see what we can do. Many of us are very fortunate not to have a need of their services, but for those that do, the donations we make make all the difference. Thank you very much. Now call on Dr Richard Simpson to be followed by Bob Doris. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I want to add my congratulations to Siobhan McMahon uh, for obtaining this debate. It's another member's debate uh, on an important topic. And as Jackson Carlo said, I think that we are, as a society, one that's made progress. And uh, you know, these two organisations uh, are within you know, a generation of being founded. And it's a demonstration of the fact that how things have improved. The, uh, uh, Centre for Children with Motor Impairments, founded in 1991, as other members have said, and, and, and Bobath just a little later, 1996. Uh, and it's interesting, however, that the different ways of funding these organisations, uh, and I think that that's something that is important. Obviously, the voluntary contributions are, as Jackson Carlo said, very important, uh, but also the contribution of, of, of government and local authorities, and it's coordinating those that I think are important. And I, I want to address that a little bit in my speech today, rather than covering some of the things which other members have already covered uh, uh, in such a, a, a clear uh, fashion. When, uh, when I was engaged in, in a fund, in, as the fundraiser for, the, for my local hospice, when I was uh, one of the, the group that were founding it, uh, we wrestled with this uh, business of, of fund holding. And in the mid-80s, having got the hospice going and, and, and achieving reasonable funding, we were faced at the time of high inflation with really serious problems, as the whole hospice movement uh, was. And, and the result uh, of action that we took at that point was to persuade the then government, uh, represented as it was by Michael Forsyth, one of the things that he actually did rather well, uh, to agree to uh, support the funding on a matched funding basis. Uh, and that actually saved the hospices in Scotland. It didn't happen in England. They went through a much more difficult time. And I'd like to suggest to the Chamber that one of the things we should be looking at going forward is to look at how we fund some of these voluntary organisations. We should acknowledge that these organisations raise money by cycling in the way that was suggested by Mr Dornan, uh, but in many other ways, running marathons, all sorts of things. And we could encourage them not only by the UK tax relief, which already does, and it's excellent that that is the case through, through grant aid, but we could also offer it in the way the government is currently offering for the Glasgow School of Art, offering to match what the public want. And that involves us as a society in a, in a much greater way. I'd like to suggest something else, and that is that when the government does fund an organisation through something like, uh, uh, through, through a voluntary organisation, through its direct funding, uh, that they should also operate on a three-year basis, which I think is the basic principle that it, is supposed to occur. But they should extend that to include uh, what I've called the, the stop-the-clock system. And that is often the decisions are made in government at the very last minute. And many of these voluntary organisations have to uh, have to uh, give out redundancy notices which are then withdrawn because the funding is then found. Stop the clock means that for four months before the ending of funding, the funding clock uh, stops so that funding then continues to be funded for at least four months until the decision is made. And that allows redundancy notices not to be put out in the sector. 
There are a huge number of advances in this area. Stirling University, which I've been involved with since it was, again, since it was set up in, in, in the 60s, was set out to have good disabled access, not available to some of the older universities, but very important. And there are many students with cerebral palsy uh, and who are in wheelchairs who actually attend that university as a result of good access. And that good access is really very important. And knowing about that access is important. And I want to commend also in that respect uh, the new guide that's been established by Ewan, uh, Ewan's Guide, a young man who has motor neuron disease, who has actually set out to establish a website which in, uh, allows us to see access for disabled people. And that sort of activity, I think, uh, uh, should be encouraged. I think there are problems still with care and repair. And I, I don't have time, presiding, Deputy Presiding Officer, to go into that, but I think that the just two final points. One is that care and repair is a problem. The other is, as we merge health and social care, we really need to look at the, some of the allied health professionals like speech and language and occupational therapy, which uh, I know that people like Bob Doris have been looking at in, in the uh, health committee. These need to be integrated and properly funded to provide the support that is necessary uh, to, to individuals who suffer from uh, this sort of condition. So can I thank Sivon for bringing the, McMahon for bringing this debate forward and providing an opportunity to address some of the issues which I believe are important for this group of disabled as well as others. Thanks very much. I now call on Bob Doris, after which move the Minister for the closing speech. Um, thank you very much, President Officer. And can I also thank Siobhan McMahon for securing this debate and speaking absolutely passionately uh, and from the heart in relation to something that's clearly very close to her and, and, and our, our family's life. You can tell in this chamber when someone's pushing a line and when they're speaking from the heart and they mean every word they say. And, I, and that's the light that I, and that I listened to Siobhan's opening uh, speech. Um, as an MSP for Glasgow, I, I know Boba Scotland pretty well, given that they're located in the north of the city and I've visited them a, a, a number of occasions. As the motion suggests, uh, I'd also wish to uh, recognise also the Scottish Centre for uh, Children with Motor Impairment, as well as Bobath Scotland for what they do for young people and families living with uh, cerebral palsy and other related conditions. I'm less aware of the Scottish Centre for Children with Motor Impairment, um, and I, I perhaps will, given the time I've got, concentrate on Bobath Scotland, but no disrespects intended in, in, in relation to that. Bobath Scotland came to Glasgow in 1995 after several families in the area joined efforts in an attempt to bring Bobath therapy, therapy to Glasgow, an alternative to conductive education and to bring it closer to home. At its inception, it stood as the only centre in Scotland to offer this unique form of treatment and care to those who suffered from the condition of cerebral palsy and remain the only bespoke centre to this day. This therapy has provided to be an effective means of increasing the sensory, communicative and functional skills of those who are living with cerebral palsy. Throughout the course of this charity's life, it has delivered over 33,000 therapy sessions, each one tailored uniquely to the needs of uh, those benefiting from that therapy. I would like to take particular note actually, of the adult programme Bobath Therapy has, uh, Bobath Scotland has recently developed. I understand that this programme has recently completed a two-year pilot programme which was funded by the Robertson Trust to determine the feasibility of fully developing and implementing this component of their services for that transition and into adult life. I recognise that this is a major stepping stone for the charity, one which comes with financial risks and with several unknowns. I commend their desire to extend their services to the adult community living with cerebral palsy and hope that the NHS, local authorities and other partners can work with them and families in making this fair therapy a feasible option for adults. Indeed, health and social care integration, as Dr Richard Simpson mentioned, as well as the principles of independent living and the recent Self-Directed Support Act, which we put through this chamber, all knits nicely to the kind of empowerment we want, not just with those living with cerebral palsy, but also with their families, that they can reach their full potential. And Bobath Scotland uh, has a powerful uh, way to make that happen. Um, I did have a look through uh, Bobath Scotland's website uh, before, uh, before, before the, this evening's um, debate, and uh, I, I might just read a, a few words out from the mother of a, a, young, a young boy called Alfie and how, how Bobath Therapy benefited uh, him. Um, Alfie attended the Bobath Scotland Cerebral Palsy Children's Therapy Centre in March 2009 for a two-week block of intensive therapy parents, grandparents, community physiotherapists and educational support staff all joined in quite often at the same time as part 
of the same team. Alfie began sitting up unaided for a little while, a first, and demonstrated a determination and strength in his legs his family had not uh, seen before. And while he was no means he had no means of verbal communication as yet, like any other toddler, he made his parents aware when he needed attention. Uh, his mum, Emma, explained the whole Bobath experience taught us that uh, we're not alone in this. Staff were so professional, pleasant and unfazed by it all, physically and emotionally for Alfie and for all of us, it was a fantastic experience. It really was a turning point for us of acceptance of Alfie's cerebral palsy and that although his life may be in a very different form than we may have in intended, it does not mean it will be bad. Uh, one final word from his mum, the presiding officer, with your indulgence. Uh, Alfie is doing very well in comparison with many children with cerebral palsy. He is engaged and understands a lot. Do not get me wrong, I have had my dark moments and felt pessimistic, sad and guilty, but I do believe in my heart that everything really is going to be fine. His smile says it all. So, in conclusion, presiding officer, I think what everyone in today's debate is saying, where something works, how we can roll that out and maximise all families across Scotland having the choice to access that kind of intensive benefit is something surely we can come together on. And how we map that out is something I would be keen to work in partnership with the Minister. And I would like to congratulate Siobhan McMahon again for uh, bringing this motion to the Chamber this afternoon. Many thanks. And I now call on Minister Michael Matheson to close the debate on behalf of the Government. Seven minutes, Minister, or thereby. Thank you, President Officer Like others, can I offer my congratulations to Siobhan McMahon for securing time for uh, this debate and also for the personal insight she's given uh, the Chamber to her own personal experience in the way uh, in which she received services and uh, how effective she felt uh, they were. I'm sure all members in the Chamber recognise that the uh, there is a, a, a clear importance in the way in which uh, therapy is provided to uh, people of all ages who have a, a, a motor impairment. Uh, and it's essential that we have the right services in place to allow that to be delivered in an effective uh, way. Now, whilst um, uh, such motor impairments uh, uh, cannot be cured, uh, we do know that the, uh, there is a possibility to significantly improve the independence and the quality of life uh, for an individual through the appropriate use of therapeutic intervention. Uh, and a key part of that therapeutic intervention uh, is also to look at how it can develop a strong partnership with the individual who requires a the therapy, their families and carers and the others who work with them. Now, as a number of members have uh, highlighted the important work that is undertaken by the uh, Bobath Centre in uh, Glasgow and also the uh, Scottish Centre for Children uh, with Motor Impairments in Cumbernauld, I do know the, uh, uh, the uh, centre in uh, Glasgow, having uh, visited myself, although I have not been to uh, the centre in Cumbernauld, but I am aware of the extensive work that they do uh, undertake in supporting individuals and their families. Uh, in helping to get the support and assistance that they uh, require. Uh, one of the areas of important work uh, that they are uh, both taking forward at the present time is building up their outreach services, uh, outreach into uh, the community uh, in order to develop further partnerships uh, with their colleagues and local authorities, uh, the third sector and the NHS. The objective behind this is in order to widen the impact that the centres can make uh, uh, to those who may not find uh, the physical centres that they have in Cumberland and Glasgow uh, accessible to them. Now, I think uh, Siobhan McMahon raised a very important point in her own uh, contribution around the uh, way in which services at times can be disjointed, uh, particularly for uh, children, and how we can uh, make sure that there is much more in the way of joined up working taking place between our agencies. Uh, that is why we have taken forward specifically uh, the GIRFIC uh, uh, proposals and taken it into the Children and Young People's uh, uh, Bill in order to make sure that we have this whole process underpinned in legislation. And the intention behind GIRFIC is for all children and young people in Scotland, including those with a disability, uh, to ensure that they all achieve their potential. Uh, and doing that is to make sure that we have a universal approach to improving the outcomes for all children and young people, uh, and that they, this is an approach that should be used by all agencies, whether it be local authority or NHS. That type of joined-up working is absolutely essential in order to make sure that the appropriate assessment 
and services are provided in order to meet the needs of a child and their family, including those with a disability. And we would expect all services to be planning how they deliver uh, services to children and young people by taking this approach uh, forward. I want to turn also to uh, a couple of other areas which I think are particularly important in this uh, field. Uh, Richard Simpson made reference to uh, access to the provision of AHPs and the way in which AHP services uh, are delivered. Um, I uh, obviously have a, an interest in this matter as a former AHP myself, uh, 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 which I should make members uh, aware of. Uh, but I have often been aware that the value and benefit that we can gain from our AHP staff is not maximised. Uh, which is exactly why uh, I brought forward the AHP delivery plan, in order to transform the way in which we deliver our HP services in order to design them in a way which allows, for example, self-referral uh, much more freely, but also to make sure that they are flexible in the way in which they deliver their services for children and young people and also uh, for adults. We are already seeing some of the progress that has been made from that, and I believe that that will help to improve services uh, yet further. Now, several members have also made reference to the uh, access to services such as uh, Bobath. And, uh, I think it is worth recognising that Bobath is one form of therapeutic intervention. It is not the only form of therapeutic intervention for uh, motor impairments, uh, but nevertheless it is a very valuable and useful uh, skill set. We recently, uh, through our AHP National Lead for Children and Young People, uh, facilitated a meeting with the Chief Executive Officer uh, and the uh, Therapy Lead uh, for Bobath Scotland uh, and the Physiotherapy and Occupational Therapy Leads from across Scotland uh, to discuss how they can better establish their uh, partnership. And one of the clear areas that came from that particular meeting is to look at how the Bobath Centre can help to support the OTs and physios in different board areas in order to deliver some of the programme at a localised level. Now, it is a matter for each individual board to look at how they then uh, take that forward, but I think this approach in working with the Bobath Centre to help to support that type of service provision within a localised area is an appropriate way and a useful way for that to be uh, taken forward. And I would hope that boards would be receptive to that offer of partnership from uh, the Bobath Centre and no doubt the work that the centre in Cumbernauld also undertake. Can I just also uh, briefly turn to the issue that Richard Simpson mentioned in relation to uh, funding and uh, others have mentioned in relation to funding. We do obviously provide funding to uh, both of these organisations. No doubt members will recognise who are regular attenders of uh, members' debates that there is often a call for funding for a whole range of different organisations. Um, I hear the point that Richard Simpson is making in relation to uh, match funding in a way that has been provided for the uh, Glasgow Art School. I would only say a note of caution here, that there is a danger that those smaller organisations that do not have as big a profile could potentially be impacted by that type of approach. And the Section 16B approach we take is to try and cover a range of different organisations to allow them to undertake very valuable uh, work as, uh, as well. But I'm no doubt, I'm always willing to look at if there are better ways in which we can help to support these organisations uh, with the limited funds that we do have, that I'm always open to ideas and approaches as to how that can uh, be achieved. Uh, so officer, in drawing my uh, remarks to a close, can I again say that I very much value the work that's undertaken by uh, both of these organisations. I'm more than happy to explore if there are other ways in which we can help to work with these uh, organisations to support them in the work that they're undertaking. But I hope members will be reassured by some of the work that we are taking forward at a national level is aimed at helping to try and support these organisations to reach into communities beyond where their own bases are in order to make sure that those who could benefit from their services are able to do so. Many thanks and thank you all. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.